Shvat, the 15th day in the month of Shvat. In the Mishnah, in the Oral Torah, our rabbis teach us that most of the rain has fallen and we are now celebrating the new year of the tree, Rosh Hashanah Le'ilanot. But when you look around you, the trees are bare, except for the evergreen. So what are we celebrating? Our commentators say we're celebrating the potential and the renewal that is happening at the moment. Shortly, there will be a burst of flourishing of colors in flowers and in fruits. When I think of trees, I definitely think of Keren Kayemet Israel, the Jewish National Fund. Since its establishment, it has planted over 240 million trees in Israel. When the first pioneers came to Israel in the late 1900s, they found a desolate country and very little shade. In 1901, the Keren Kayemet was established and trees were planted all over Israel. It's a privilege to invite Rabbi Dr. Alan Kimchi, the founder of Ne'er Yisrael Shul in Hendon, who made Aliyah with his lovely wife a few years ago. While living in England, he was a trustee of, the, of JNF UK, and he is now going to say a few words about Tu Bishvat and Keren Kayemet L'Israel, Rabbi Kimchi. Shalom. I'm sitting here in my home in uh, Yerushalayim, and I'd like to welcome you all to this Tu Bishvat event of the uh, JNF, uh, Karen Kayemet. Um, for many years in London, I was honoured to be part of the uh, uh, trustees and executive of the JNF UK, because the goals of the organisation are very close to my heart. Let's have a closer look for a few minutes at Tu Bishvat itself. The earliest reference to Tu Bishvat is in the Mishnah, the Mishnah that was written over 2,000 years ago in the land of Israel. We find in Masachet Rosh Hashanah, the very first Mishnah of chapter 1, deals with the Rosh Hashanah that we are familiar with, with the blowing of the Shefer, a day where we are accountable to, to God. But at the same time, it also speaks about other days in the year of the Jewish calendar where we are also days of accounting. And one of them is Rosh Hashanah Ilanot, days where uh, in the calendar we have to <clears throat> make an accounting of our generosity and our giving of the produce of the trees, of the uh, harvest from the orchards, and giving to the poor and to the Trumoto Masrat. Without going into details, this was a, a very important moment in the calendar in terms of one's chesed. However, in our generation, this day of Tu B'Shvat has taken on an additional meaning. Let me explain. Uh, we find that we are benefiting from the greatest gift that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given to the Jewish people in our generation, which is the ability to come back to the land of Israel, the land of our origin, the land of our destiny, and that is Shivat Zion. But this, this return to Israel was predicted and part of the vision of the Nevi'im about 2,700 years ago. For example, in the Navi Amos, in chapter 9, he speaks about this uh, vision that he has, and we are living inside his vision. Let me give you an example, and you'll see where the trees figured in that. The Pasuk says, yamim ba'im um Hashem. I can see the days coming, says the Amos. The Shavti at Shavut Ami Yisrael, the Jewish people will be brought back to the land of Israel. Like a homing instinct, we will all be drawn back to the land of Israel. And what will happen? Ubanu arim neshamat neshamot v'yashuvu. They will rebuild desolate towns, and they will inhabit them. They will rebuild cities which which haven't been built for thousands of years. Vasu ganot v'achluprihen. And part of the vision is they will plant trees, orchards, and eat its fruit. And from there, Chazal say we see that the trees and the fruit of Eretz Yisrael have a special Kedusha, special sanctity, and a special meaning for us, because they are one of the Simanei Gula. They are signs of our return to Israel. And therefore, anyone, has a ch anyone who has a chance to participate in the, build, in, in the planting of trees in Israel is, is, is participating really in this sign of our return and the permanence of our return into the land of Israel. But there is a second level of meaning uh, to this, uh, to building, to planting trees. Uh, uh, another Mishnah, and the very first Mishnah of Masachet Peah. Let me tell you one word about the word Peah. Peah means the corner. And there in the Mishnah, it's a reference to one of the mitzvot of chesed, one of the mitzvot of generosity, which is mentioned in Vayikra chapter 23, Parshat Emor, of Kutzrechem et Ketzir Arzachem, when you harvest your field, and the same thing is true when you harvest your orchard. 
Don't harvest the whole lot and take everything the land has to offer you. What you must do is leave the payah, leave leave the edges and the corner of the field or the orchard. Leave it for the poor people to come and help themselves. And this was a beautiful expression of generosity and care within the land of Israel to look after other people. And indeed, uh, the Karen Kayemet and JNF is not only involved in planting trees, it's actually a relatively small part of their activity. What they're involved is developing towns, looking after the low-income areas of Israel, and that is a tremendous, a tremendous mitzvah. And there in that Mishnah, the very first Mishnah of Peah, the Mishnah says something very beautiful. It says, a person who engages in, in these mitzvot benefits in this world, but also benefits for all eternity. That's where this comes from. The name of the organization comes from this Mishnah, the Keren Kayemet, which here speaks about the trunk of the tree. Every tree, every fruit tree has Ochel Peroteim Ba'olam Hazeh, gives its fruits, which are this worldly benefits, but the trunk remains forever. And that is a symbol for the beauty of the Nitzchiyut of Netzach Yisrael, the eternity of the people, which, it, which derives itself from the Nitzchiyut of our connection to our Kadosh Baruch Hu, to the Bore Olam. The HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who created the world and created Am Yisrael, gave us the Torah and gave us this mitzvah of chesed and generosity, which is in fact a keren kayemet lo'olam haba. And therefore, anyone, of, anyone who has an opportunity to participate in the planting of trees, in the developing of the land of Israel, is indeed uh, 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 engaging both in the vision of the Nevi'im and also in the vision of the Keren Kayemet Lo'olam Haba, the eternal benefits that we get from living a life of chesed, of emunah, and of mitzvot. And Bezrat Hashem, we should all have the zuchut to participate in whatever way we can in these mitzvot uh, for many years to come. V'chein Yihiratam. אני חירוי אמר, אני מנהל המשתלה, אני נולדתי באתיופיה, למדתי עד כיתה י' ב' באתיופיה, לאחר מכן אני יצאתי לרוסיה ללמוד אגרונום בהגנת התומאה, ברוסיה אני למדתי ברוסית, אני יודע לדבר רוסית, יא מגו גברית ברוסקי הזה. הגעתי פה ארצה ולקחתי קורסים בעברית, במיוחד הקורס שקרן קיימת הרגינה לעולים אקדמיים, ולאחר מכן אני התחלתי לעבוד כסוקר יערות. מ-2003 אני מנהל את המשתלה. בגדול אני פה במשתלה שלנו מגדל יותר מהמינים שונים. אנחנו מגדלים גם צמחים בוסטן, כמו רימונים, זיתים, תאנים, תרומת ידע. של אנשי מקצוע של הקרן הקיימת לישראל זה מאוד מאוד חשוב לארץ מגיעים הרבה אנשים מכל מיני מדינות על מנת ללמוד את שיטות הגידול שלנו איך אנחנו מתמודדים עם התהליכי מדבור עד היום קרן הקיימת לישראל נתנה בערך 250 מיליון שתילים ונכון להיום אני מייצר פה 250 אלף שתילים מהמינים שונים הכל צומח מפה זה נקרא ארגז הנבטה, אני מעביר אותם למכולת הנבטה או נקרא אינקובטור, צריך לעשות אותם בארגז, פה הם נמצאים בתנאים מבוקרים. רוב השתילים שיוצאים מפה, נטעים אותם בכל היערות של הקרן הקיימת, ולכן איפה שהשתילים שלי מוצלחים בשטחי יער, הם אהובים עליי. גם אני מאוד אהבתי ואוהב לעבוד בקרן הקיימת. כי קרן הקיימת לישראל היא הארגון הירוק הגדול במדינת ישראל. כל השנה משתלה פתוחה, אני מזמין אתכם לבקר פה במשתלה, לראות את התהליך הייצור השתילים מזרע לשתיל. אנחנו מחכים להם כאן במשתלת גולני עם הצוות עובדי משתלה. On the 16th of June, 2010, a forest was dedicated in the Jerusalem hills to then Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, on becoming a Lord. Twenty-five thousand trees were planted, and both Rabbi Lord Sachs and Lady Elaine were there and planted the first trees. 
the ceremony, Rabbi Sachs said, and I quote, there is no honor we have received or could receive that is greater than to have a forest dedicated in our name in the place the Jewish nation calls home. To enlighten us with words of Torah from Rabbi Sachs, I invite Israel United Synagogue Israel Rabbi Gideon Sylvester, please. Today brings back really happy memories of that very special day when we dedicated the Lord Sachs Forest here in Jerusalem. I remember the beautiful singing by Hazan Rabbi Lionel Rosenfeld and Rabbi Sachs's joy as he and Lady Elaine planted the first tree in the forest. Tu Bishvat for Rabbi Sachs was a day which I think carried two of his most important messages. The message of responsibility and the message of hope. First responsibility. Every year Rabbi Sachs loved to quote the beautiful Midrash from Bereshit Rabba, which describes how immediately following the creation of humanity, God took Adam on a tour of the Garden of Eden. He showed him all its beauty, the trees, the fruit, the flowers and the vegetables. And God said to Adam, look at this wonderful creation, enjoy it, but be sure to take care of it. Because if you don't, there'll be no one to repair the damage. And Rabbi Sachs saw this Midrash as a powerful metaphor for our failure to look after the environment and to take care of God's world. And for Rabbi Sachs, that responsibility was all important. He used to tell us the story of Rabbi Shnoya Zalman of Liadi, the famous scholar and mystic, who was once staying in an inn with his son and his baby grandson. They each had adjoining rooms, and at night they went to the rooms and the two rabbis settled down to learn while the baby slept. Rav Shnoya Zalman was intense in his learning when he heard the baby murmur and the murmur turned to a cry and the cry turned to weeping. And Rabbi Shnoya Zalman got up, left his learning and went to cuddle and comfort the child until it fell back to sleep. And on his way back to his room, Rabbi Shnaya knocked on his son's door. And he turned to his son and he said, My son, I'm so proud that you love learning Torah. But if your learning Torah means that you're deaf to the cry of a child, then there is something very deficient in the way that you're learning God's Torah. Because God's Torah must make us more caring, and more compassionate, and more sensitive to every person, to every child, to every infant, and to the world around us. And for Rabbi Sachs, that was a crucial message. And I think that's why he took such pride in this Jewish state, in the fact that Israel planted so many trees, so many beautiful gardens and parks, and that there would be one park here in the state of Israel bearing his name. And in that, I think Rabbi Sachs found a profound message of hope. And that message of hope for Tu Bishvat was spelled out by his colleague and friend, my teacher Rabbi Shlomo Riskin of Efrat. Rabbi Riskin points out that it's very strange that the Jews have a festival of spring which takes place in Shvat in February when it's cold and dark and wet. Rabbi Riskin pointed out that any objective observer who came along would say, this isn't spring, this is winter. But he noted that there's something very beautiful about the fact that the Jewish people notice the very first signs of spring in the trees, the very first blossom. And we celebrate those very first traces of spring, even though it's still winter. And he saw this also reflected in this week's Parashat Hashanah, when the Jewish people are still enslaved in Egypt, and yet God commands us to hold a Seder, to start telling the story of the going out of Egypt, even though we have not yet left. 
Pontius as Rabbi Sachs pointed out over and over again to us. Judaism is the religion of hope. Judaism carries the message and the faith and the belief in hope. And Judaism charges us to take that hope, to turn it into responsibility, and to make our world into a better place. I wish you to be shvat I'd like to thank Rabbi Dr. Alan Kimchi and Rabbi Gideon, Gideon Sylvester for their words, and thank the Living and Learning Department in United Synagogue and the JNF UK for helping with this presentation. I'd like to finish with a story that's told in the Gemara in the Oral Torah in Masechet Ta'anit. It's told of an older man who is planting a carob tree, and when a person passerby comes around, he asks how long will it take till this tree bears fruit? And the old man says, about 70 years. And you think you will be here in 70 years to enjoy the fruits of this tree? Why are you planting? The old man looked at him and said, when I came into this world, there were trees that had been planted by my father and grandfather and generations before. And therefore I am planting trees now for the generations that will come after me. I want to leave a legacy in this world. Wishing you all a Tuvishvat Sameach.